First at four, a mother's agonizing wait for justice is finally over. Why the suspect in her son's death had to be convicted twice. Also, Local 4 live at polling places all around Metro Detroit. You can vote for another four hours, and we're kicking off our primary coverage now. We'll talk about what's at stake for Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Both invested a lot of time trying to win your vote. Good afternoon, Ben. Hey, Karen. Sunshine's back, but flakes are in the forecast for tomorrow. Will it affect our morning commutes? We'll look at it right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, Michigan is the big prize tonight in the Democratic race for president with Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders looking to grab our delegates. Former Vice President Biden comes here one week after a big Super Tuesday comeback, trying to hold on to his front runner momentum. Senator Sanders pulled the upset over Hillary Clinton back in 2016 and is hoping Michigan gives him another boost in 2020. Overall, six states are voting today with 352 delegates on the line. Michigan accounts for more than a third. Let's go to local fours. Larry Spruill. He is at a polling place in Detroit. How are, is turnout right now, Larry? Well, Karen, we have been stopping through multiple polling locations throughout the day, ending here at Chrysler Elementary School, one of the busiest polling locations. As you can see, people are in line waiting to cast their vote. Now, voting offices are expecting about a 30 to 35 percent voter turnout today for this primary. We have brand new voting video into our newsroom of Chrysler Elementary School, one of the busiest polling locations throughout Metro Detroit. Now, both former Vice President Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders made multiple stops here in Metro Detroit over the last few days speaking to voters to make sure they get their vote. Now this could be a deal breaker for Bernie Sanders if he does not do well here in Michigan. Many voters I talk to say they understand the importance of this primary so showing up is a must. Well it's imperative that we vote to change the toxic era what's going on here. I always vote with, without fail because it's one of our important civic duties, I think. It was pretty easy to vote, so I'm happy about that, but I hope that there's a lot more people that turn out throughout the day. I am a lifetime voter. I started with my parents, and now that I'm 90 years old, I figure I should continue the process. Now, the voting office tells me the change to allowing people to vote absentee without cause is a huge game changer, and a lot of people took advantage of that. Also, there is another issue that could alter the voting turnout, and that is the coronavirus. Now, coming up tonight at 5, I will show you what poll workers are doing to keep everyone safe. I'm working on that story. I'll have an all-new report coming up tonight at 5. We're live in Detroit. Larry Sproul. Local four. All right. Thank you so much, Larry. And in addition to Larry's report at five, we'll check on polling places in Warren and Rochester Hills as well. Remember, polls are open until 8 p.m. Once they close, you can track results as they come in at clickondetroit.com on our homepage and get a good roundup of where things stand. On Local four news at 11. We've got you covered hour by hour. In other news today, it has been a long and painful wait for justice in the death of a two-year-old boy. Nicole Randall lost her son, Damian Sutton, years ago. A jury first found Ronald DeMambro, DeMambro guilty of murder and child abuse in 2014, but he got a second trial after evidence was withheld. Convicted again, he was sentenced today. Sutton's mother is relieved this is over and says it was a painful process. I'm just glad this chapter of my life is closed. And I won't have to face another trial again and have to relate the worst possible thing a mother could go through. The judge again sentenced Mambro to life in prison. He denies he's responsible for the child's death, saying the child died from injuries suffered in a fall. A plastic surgeon who is registered in the state of Michigan is facing some serious charges here and in the state of Ohio. Dr. Manish Gupta was arrested on March 6th. He's accused of drugging women, sexually assaulting them, and recording those results. Assaults. Records show he has medical offices in Toledo and Oregon, Ohio, plus Taylor, Michigan. Investigators found videos in his office in Toledo. Rod Maloney working the story this afternoon, and he'll have more on the alleged victims. And what comes next? 
If you enjoyed our recent taste of spring, I fear it is coming to an end once again. Let's check in with meteorologist Ben Bailey. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Karen, the clouds have gotten out of here, and that's allowed the sunshine to at least give us some warmth this afternoon. But our wind chills were running in the 30s, and in some places, feeling like it was below freezing here around midday. Even though there's still a little bit of a noticeable wind, the numbers have bounced back nicely, especially in the north and west zones to get that sunshine first. Mid 40s generally out there. And even though we may see a couple more degrees up, we are going to fall pretty fast tonight with those clear skies. 35 by midnight, so we're in for a chilly night and it's going to be too much to ask if the 60s back, but there are snowflakes in the forecast tomorrow. We'll discuss that in just a few minutes. Karen. Thank you, Ben. Now breaking news from Wall Street where the markets are closing. It has been an up and down struggle today as investors are trying to recover from Monday's steep drop. Let's take a live look at the Dow Jones. You can see it is up 1167 points. The markets have been volatile for more than three weeks in large part because of Corona fears. And then that tanking oil price added to the damage yesterday. Now let's get caught up on the many new developments swirling around the coronavirus, including some promising news from the nation's health insurance companies. Local 4's Devin Skillian joins us from the newsroom with today's roundup of the big developments. Devin. Yeah, Karen, the entire world struggling with the best ways to contain the virus, even as it's spread to new areas. And that, of course, continues to seem inevitable. But let's start with our update with a focus on Michigan. So far, still no confirmed cases in our state, but health officials say 24 test results are still pending. We await those. Remember, most people who contract the virus will see a mild or moderate impact Older people, those with underlying conditions, though, remain the most at risk. But prevention measures continue across the country. The Ivy League has canceled its basketball tournaments. NCAA has not made any changes for March Madness, which is coming up here soon, uh, but says they continue to monitor the situation. Ivy League is uh, stopping their tournament, though. At the White House, insurance companies have agreed to waive copays for coronavirus testing and will extend coverage for treatment. These uh, CEOs have also agreed to no surprise billing. Uh, we want people to get tested. Over a million tests are out uh, thanks to the diligent work of CDC and HHS. More than four million will go out this week. If you have any questions about your health coverage, still a good idea to make sure you check with your own provider first. Uh, off the coast of California, passengers are slowly being removed from the Grand Princess cruise ship. It docked yesterday, but moving about 2,500 guests into quarantine is a quite time-consuming task. USA Today reports one Florida couple is suing the cruise line for negligence and a million dollars in damages. At least one lawsuit that we've heard of so far. Things have gotten worse, unfortunately, in Italy in the past 24 hours. The entire country now on lockdown. Yesterday, it was a quarter of the population. Italians can only travel for work, health, or other necessities. Uh, stores and restaurants close at dusk right now. The country has more than 10,000 confirmed cases and thus far has tallied 631 deaths. And don't forget, our Dr. Frank Me George has been answering your questions about coronavirus. His tape segments are posted on the health page of clickondetroit.com, which is a really great resource to check as questions come up for you and your family. All right, Karen, back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Devin. And there are so many businesses making changes because of the virus. We will share more from airlines to restaurants to even game shows later in this newscast. Still ahead, first at four, how the state of Michigan is getting involved in a legal battle over robocalls. Plus the eye-popping number of nuisance calls we received last year. Paula. These young women just brought home the trifecta of state championships. Yet, they say they struggle to still be considered actual athletes. Why is that? Sports fans, are you ready to place your wagers? We have a gambling update months in the making. Stay with us.